Hey guys, hey, this is Nay. Follow me on IG, Twitter, and Periscope, and Nay Rob on YouTube. Now, let's talk the new edition movie, part two, The Clash of the Titans. I said that when my mom passed, she left us uh, the house. And my mom kept things, like I'm shocked. But look what she got. Mm -hmm. I need to sell this. Bam. What is this? Yes. This got my Count Me Out song. Love the video. Y'all know I told y'all I love me old Bobby Brown. Look at this. The king of stage, baby. Um, I'm calling this the Clash of the Titans because um, the first episode or the first uh, part of it, it seemed kind of slow, but the part, but I spoke about the parts that stood out to me, but um, the part, the second part, I mean, really, really reeled me in. And I'm going to do a BBD uh, video also because I watched them on the Breakfast Club the other day, and they added more information to uh, what we were seeing. So um, me and my sister both um, agreed that it broke our hearts to see how the men were, um, you know, tearing each other apart behind the scenes. It was, it was heartbreaking. Who else's heart was broken? I mean, as for the mothers, I want to touch on the mothers. I think the moms were casted very well. I think all the mothers were stars, like Lala was Ronnie's mom. The girl from Jason's Lyric that was Tretch's girlfriend, she was somebody's mom. I told you Ebony from the Players Club was somebody's mom. Like, I'm starting to see more people. Um, and it seems like some of the cast members for a new edition. I've seen them before. I just don't know where I've seen them before. And, you know, like Bobby, it's 1985, Bobby, and the movie depicted you as doing coke by 1985. I don't even think you were 16 years old, even though that is kind of, this, you know, I, it, I hate to say it, but it is kind of the norm because when I talk to the young dude or the dudes that I grew up with, they was telling me, you know, they was doing coke at 14, 15 years old, which to me it's not strange because the dudes from 640 now, the young dudes around 640, they sniffing heroin. And if you don't know, Lil Wayne, that was his judge. He was sniffing heroin when he was 13, 14, 15 year old. So I'm not really shocked about it but i'm like wow and, you know, um um you know bobby started showing his butt um i think he became rebellious because the aquarius is the boss the aquarius is an asshole and even in the movie was it ralph that called him an asshole one of the people was like you're an asshole the aquarius is an asshole how did you feel about the singers singing the movie, the singing throughout the movie with their own voices opposed to them lip syncing? Like, I think that the actors did a very, very good job. But would they, I, I don't know whether I liked it or I didn't like it. Tell me if you liked that they were singing, that the act, the uh, the actors were singing the song. I don't know. I I wasn't mad about it. Um, it was different, I guess. But I mean, tell me what you guys think. So it seemed like also throughout part two that it was about perspective, and because Michael the Leo. Uh, he was strong-willed, he was the leader. And we could see that in this movie that the Leo, the leader, and they mentioned how um, Michael 
uh, was thought that he was running things. I mean, to be honest with you, that's what happens. Somebody has to run things. There has to be a leader. And who better to be a leader, leader than um, a Leo? Yeah, you know, the Leo could be a bully at times because when, who was that? One of them, you know, the fight between Michael and Bobby, when they spit in each other's face or when that dude spit in his face, I mean, I think Michael spit in Bobby's face because they was getting ready to fire Michael. I'm like, how y'all let this dude come up and be like, oh, fire him. And then next week, you know, he's trying to fire Bobby, but they accomplished firing Bobby because Bobby was showing his tail too much. I'm telling y'all, us air signs, we be tripping, man. We be tripping. I don't know what's been wrong Leo, with um, I saw, I always felt like Michael was a leader. I always felt like Michael had that mindset of, uh, of, 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 I'm going to handle it because remember he branched off and he did his own thing. Like he paid attention, you know, he wanted to know what was going on behind the scenes. And that's when he came up with voice to men, um, ABC. Um, it was a couple of other groups that he had, but, um, you know, Michael Bivens, I think something happened with that. I'm not sure, but Michael Bivens had his own thing going on and I'm not surprised. And if you guys are old enough to remember the Temptations, the least talented of the Temptations was the leader of their group. I want to say, was it Melvin? I'm not sure, but you know, they call Michael Bivens the least talented of New Edition and he was the leader of their group, not the lead singer, but the when um, Mike spit in Bobby face, Bobby Brown, the Aquarius, the fair Aquarius said, uh, I'm not dead, forget about it. When it came time, when they all sat down the round table and was like, let's fire Bobby, Michael Bivens was like, nah, I'm not with it. You could tell that them boys reluctantly fired Bobby. And um, it's so many mixed stories about why Bobby left that uh, I don't really know what to I started believe. noticing. Like my sister noticed this. My sister was like, I didn't realize how quiet Ronnie was. Don't forget Ronnie is a Scorpio. Scorpios sit back and they watch. They are, um, they, they watch everything that's going on. Now don't get me wrong. They are indeed an alpha male. They are not a sucker by a long shot. And believe me, like I said, if you hurt one of them, you will pay. But Ronnie did more watching than intervening and talking just like uh, Ricky was way too um, perfect, the Virgo, to let someone know that he was disturbed about anything that was going on in the, um, you know, in the group or what he felt what was going on, going on in the group. So at any rate, uh, what I was talking about, how the uh, group found out that they weren't actually owned by MCEA. Uh, they were owned by Gary's company. And what I feel the, the, the group is constantly going through um, the group is constantly going through, okay, we got screwed on this deal. Let's ride it out. And then the next deal we get will be a better deal. They get screwed on that deal. They ride it out. And then the next deal they get is a, is a rough deal. It, it, it's sad. It is truly, truly sad. This after they put Bobby out, they voted Bobby out. Bobby Brown was cooking coke in his mama's house. You cooking coke in your mama's house because he's still lace. He still got on the chains, but but you cooking coke in your mama's house, Bobby. To me, if you if you cooking coke, you need to be in your own house cooking coke because if you still broke and you got to live in your mama's house and cook coke, you ain't doing it right. That's all I got to say about that. You ain't doing it right. So um, then the guy from MCA said, hey, Bobby, we want you. You need to, um, like MCA was th throwing all of them in the trick bag, okay? Johnny Gill was signed to MCA. 
uh, Ricky, I'm not Ricky, Ralph, MCA went to Ralph and was like, look, you, you can have your own solo deal, but guess what? You want to do an NE album. And that was part of the deal. So Bobby was getting his deal. Ralph was going to get his deal. And New Edition were going to get, was going to get the album together. Now, all along, you know, we haven't got to the point that we haven't got to the point where basically uh, BBD is formed. That hasn't happened yet. So I guess that's going to come in number three. And I'm going to watch that tonight so that I can give you that review. You know, Ralph, when he went to uh, the MCA people and was like, MCA, look, I'm getting ready to do my own shits. I'm trying to be free. And MCA was like, for real, you keep talking that. Look, I'm trying to be nice with you, okay? You know, I'm trying to be nice. But for real, we own you. And any owes us another album. So F what you saying. You ain't making no money anyway. You need to go ahead and you get, need to give me this album. And then you can do whatever you want to do. And we'll back you on that because you need to get a little piece of that Ralph was too. like, yeah, I should have took that $6 million from Disney. I was like... Oh, no, you shouldn't have. Because everybody from Disney effed up. Everybody. Okay? Raven Simone. Uh, Orlando Brown. Who's that red? The girl with the red fire crotch. I forget her name. Fire crotch. Y'all know the name of fire crotch. Put her down below. But everybody from Disney jacked up. I wouldn't be throwing Disney up in nobody's face. I'd be like, huh? So then um, what what uh, Ralph, what Ralph um, brought up, what was very, very true, the Taurus is dedicated. He is not only, um, you know, loyal, but he's dedicated. He said that he never misses rehearsals. He ne he is at there at every show always, and you can depend on the tourists. You absolutely can. He will never so let you when down. When the BBD guys was there, and he told them, and the BBD guys was like, "Well, what are we supposed to do? I pay for my family with this any money." And to me, Ralph was he, even though it hurt some of the decisions hurt him when he moved on. It was kind of like the best thing that could happen for New Edition. Do y'all agree? When Ralph started, you know, moving on and trying to make moves and moving around, it was the best thing because think about it. They got Johnny Gill out to deal and it forced BBD to step up. Sometimes blessings come from tragedy. Johnny put fear in Ralph. And you know who orchestrated that? Mike, the Leo, the leader. He knew what he was doing. Like I said, Leos, they make decisions and there will be casualties, but it's for the greater good. Okay. That's how uh, they think. That's how they do things for the greater good. And the greater good was this. Ralph and Johnny Gill's voice played off of each other very well. Uh, that song, Voice to Men, still like makes me want to cry because it it tells a great great story that i believe that you know all men should recognize and understand you know you got to step up and that's what the song boys and men did and um one thing another thing about johnny gill the um okay let's say this the taurus uh gemini cusp johnny gill um, he is dependable. If you guys notice, Johnny Gill never, um, never really had, you never really heard of him having any confrontations with the guys. He's, you know, he always was the type that was pretty much like, um, you know, I'm here. I just want to make my money. I'm just trying to be here. Okay. But the Gemini part of him, the truth was the one that when Ralph said, you supposed to be the new Bobby, Johnny was like, nah, I'm supposed to be the new you. Johnny Gill really pointed out how 
about him and Stacy Lattisol's relationship. Let me tell you something about Stacy Lattisol. Um, um, Johnny Gill pointed to his hand as in him being too dark. And down here in the DMV back then, if you was red, you was good, okay? Like a brown skin girl like me was nothing. And if you was dark skin, oh honey, you was even worse, no matter how beautiful you were. Down here in the DMV, the only people that got love like in the 80s and the 90s were red bones. Okay, and I hate to say it, I don't know why the universe works like that. I don't know why uh, you know, this area is like that. If it's like that other places, then uh, tell me about it. But I'm telling you, red bones around here in the DMV, they act like they are, and they can look like a booger wolf, but they act like they're so old back then. I can't say for now, but they act like they were so much better than the rest of us because they were and red. Stacy Lattisall was one of them, you know, but I think he still has insecurities about being dark skinned and wanting uh, and, and loving a red their girl. Their heads but she were so big and they was conditioned, you know, by their family member and, and the community to believe that they were so much better because they were red that I see her carrying him because he's dark so he was dark i gotta skin. tell me about some of y'all experiences at a new edition concert like i've seen for myself times where um they were fighting for attention on a show on in on stage and i was like like when johnny Gill took his shirt off and and wanted to show everybody his nipple rings i was like I don't I don't like nipple rings. Anyway, guys, the same people you meet on the way up are the same people you meet on the way down. Naysayers. Let's be good to each other. Peace.